Good morning, and welcome to the Sunday morning worship experience of the Little Union Baptist Church. I'm here to provide this week's announcements before we get started with today's worship service. On Monday, November 7th, please join us for fasting from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. and corporate prayer at 7 p.m. via Zoom, Facebook Live, and the conference call line. Election Day and the last opportunity to vote is Tuesday, November 8th. We encourage all eligible voters to exercise your right to vote. Youth Church will be held on Sunday, November 13th and 27th at 10 a.m. in the Reverend W. Urban Green Memorial Chapel. The Willing Workers Ministry is organizing its annual Christmas food basket. Your help is needed to identify families in need of assistance, widows, and recently bereaved in our church and community. Please complete and submit the sponsorship request form by November 19th. 2023 ministry budget requests are due to the trustees by Friday, November 25th. The youth ministry will distribute family Advent celebration kits on November 27th. And as always, Little Union, please join us every Monday at 7 a.m. for the 7 at 7 prayer call, as well as Bible study every Wednesday at 12 p.m. and Sunday school every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom and Facebook Live. Okay, Little Union. The worship service will begin shortly. Thank you for your time and enjoy the service.
Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning. Good morning one more time. The Bible says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great things, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, the moon to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. To him who smote Egypt and his firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. My God, and brought out Egypt from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. I can go on and on and on, but somebody in this place and out there in our virtual space can testify that the Lord's mercy endureth forever. And if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise him enough. Because I know his mercy has been upon me. His mercy has been wonderful to me. When I would do good and I would do wrong, his mercy was right there. Somebody ought to thank God for his mercy. Somebody ought to give him praise for his mercy. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. I don't know about you, but he is my everything. Is he your everything? Won't you act like he's your everything? Come on, can we stand and let's give God praise wherever you are, wherever you may be. Give God praise because his mercy endure forever. He gave you eyes to see, legs to walk, a mouth to talk. Hallelujah. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his wonderful works towards the children of men. Amen and amen. May you remain standing. Amen. As the brothers will come and give us, amen, our morning selection. Amen. Sing, brothers. Lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. So I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk Come on, y'all. Y'all know it. Tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn in. Know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. He will tell them all about our trouble. And he will hear our faintest cry.
in and pray for us in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
Sessom's name ain't no power in your name either but there is a name that is above every name 
And at that name, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. I feel like preaching here. Because I know that there's no other name. I tried them for myself. And I found out no other name that I know. No other name that can heal you. No other name that can bless you. No other name. Say yeah. Ah, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, brothers. No other name. I know Trump think he got some power. I know Joe Biden think he got power. I believe Congress believe they got power. But there is a name that when he rose on the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand. And that same power that was in his hand is in his hand today to deliver and cure whatever's going on in your life. Can we give God praise for Jesus? Amen. Uh, uh, that, that's, that's all y'all got for Jesus? Come on, can we give God praise for Jesus? That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. For Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. We do honor the triune God. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are three distinct persons now. But they work in such harmony, you would think it was one. Jesus never disagrees with his father. The Holy Spirit never disagrees with Jesus. They all work together as one. Oh, if the church could do that, what a time we would have. Am I right about it? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> you weren't out of order. You were in order. Amen. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the right to praise him, darling. You got the right. Anytime the test come back negative. Hallelujah. Anybody ever been there that the test came back negative? And then there was some time when the test came back positive. And you're still here. You took your licking, but you keep on ticking. You're still here. Some of you right now on dialysis, but you're still here. Some of you are going through, amen, chemo and, radi and radiation, but you're still here. You may have lost some strength. You may have lost some hair, but you're still here. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. We're still here. And our world is in trouble. I say our world is in trouble. Our country is more divided than it's ever been. Folk want to take your right to vote away. Making it harder for folk to vote got so got so bad that now in some states they can't even can't nobody give you a man a bottle of water if you're standing in line we're living in sad times but we're living in exciting times as well because i'm just i'm just excited to see what god is going to do for his people and let me tell you if it get too bad you know what the lord will do he just take us up on out of here. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, dead in Christ going to rise first. And those who are alive and remain shall be caught up.
to meet the Lord in the air. And our minds, our finite minds cannot understand how wonderful that will be. Amen. Well, every day will be Sunday. And Sabbath will have no end. So if those folk who say, I don't, I don't need to come to church. Every day going to be Sunday when we get there. And Sabbath will have no end. Amen. I'll leave that alone for another time. Happy birthday to everybody who was born in the month of November. Sister Judith Norfleet. Amen. Birthday is, what's, what's today's date? The 5th. The 6th. Which one is it, y'all? Okay, thank you. All right. Today is the 6th, but she, had her, she celebrated on the 3rd. Amen. Deacon Norfleet, where he at? I thought I saw him. Yeah. I know you rolled out the red carpet for, for Judy. Because, you know, some women, they need a birthday month. They need a whole month. Not a day. Amen. <laughs> Sister Jackie Carter, her birthday was yesterday. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Brother Charles Johnson's birthday was yesterday as well. Deacon Willie Thomas Jr. birthday was yesterday as well. Amen. Trustee Curtis Porter, amen, birthday would be on the 11th. Praise the Lord. Deacon is Caroline Northley, I mean, I'm sorry, Yelder, Lord have mercy. Caroline Yelder, her birthday would be on the 14th of November. Amen. Brother Elvis Walton, and we're praying for you, Elvis, in the loss of your, of your aunt on this past week. We're praying for you and want to say um, a happy birthday to you. Your birthday be on the 20th. And Brother Abel Roa, birthday will be on the 21st. Amen. 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 Happy birthday to all of you. And may God continue to bless you. And may his face continue to shine upon you. And then we have uh, wedding anniversaries. Amen. Amen. Brother Michael and Sister Chanel Gordon. Amen. Their anniversary is on the 1st of November. How many years was it, Mike? 24 years. My goodness, she put up with you for 24 years. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Abel and Sister Kenya Roy, their, their anniversary will be on the 29th of November. And then Reverend James and Sister Deborah Fuller, amen, will be celebrating on November the 30th. Amen. How many years would that be, Reverend? 37 years. You put up with her for 37 years. Because I know she's a handful. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. May God keep you. Listen, happy anniversary to all of you. Amen. Some people don't last 24 hours, let alone 37 years. Amen. And so we thank God, amen, for all of the birthdays. I want to remind uh, all of our members, especially our leaders, uh, we're having a, a big action or a big meeting uh, with voice. We're asking for uh, at least 25 people from Little Union. We want more. Amen. To us, 10, um, this meeting that we're going to have on December the 4th. All right. Uh, it says join 337 plus voice leaders uh, plus key state and local officials to address voice members' key concerns. All right. Now, what are our concerns? One of our concerns in Prince William County is there isn't enough affordable housing you receive your tax assessment on your property and you know that it's going higher and higher now that's good news for you that your property is, is getting more expensive and you can make a, a nice little penny off of it but then there are some folk who are, are, are on a fixed income and when their taxes go up they got to decide am I going to buy medicine am I going to buy grocery or am I going to pay my taxes? And somebody's going to lose their house because they can't pay their taxes. Amen. And then there are people that are moving here. There are husbands and wives that are working. And, can, and guess what? They can't afford the amount that it costs to buy a home in Prince William County. Now, when you think of affordable housing, the first thing coming to your mind is Section 8, isn't it? But that's not what we're talking about. Affordable housing, my brothers and sisters, is what we call accessible housing. 
No need for you, amen, to be house poor, but then be, uh, should I, yeah, should be house poor. In other words, you can make the payment, but you can't even, you know, buy a steak if you wanted to. Because your house poor, you got a you got a nice house. You paying a big you paying a big note, but you can't even afford to even go on a vacation. That's what you call house poor, amen. And so uh, that's one of our issues. Another one of our issues is this crisis receiving center that we're going to have in Prince William County. That when uh, people um, have a, a, a mental health crisis and nine one one is called, guess what? Not only will the police be there, but a mental health professional will be there to help escalate the situation. Because police are not trained to handle mental health issues. And things can go bad very quickly. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. And so those are a couple of our issues. Amen. And, and so we're going to ask uh, uh, if you would put this on your calendar, December the 4th. Amen. At the Trinity Presbyterian Church, 650 Drainsville Road in Herndon, Virginia. Amen. And one thing I like about voice meetings, they listen, when they say it's going to last 90 minutes, they are out, if not earlier. Amen. And so uh, if you would, we would appreciate um, all of the churches who are a part have have committed at least uh, a certain amount of members. And I believe Little Union, we can show up. These are concerns of ours. We, we pay our dues to them on a yearly basis. So let's put our money where our mouth is. Amen. And let's support these efforts. Also, uh, the first AME uh, church in Manassas is sponsoring, amen, a 10-day inspirational trip to Israel. Reverend Dr. Etoria Goggins, amen, who's the pastor there, she sent me an email Amen. And wants to know if any of our members would like to go with them. Amen. They'll be departing from Dallas International Airport on Tuesday, November the 28th, 2023. All right. And so uh, we're going to ask uh, Sister Sharon to send this email, uh, send this fly out to uh, all of our members. And if you are interested, amen, just follow, amen, uh, uh, the directions. Amen. There is a payment plan as well. Amen. Some of the highlights of the tour, uh, there will be baptisms in the Jordan River. There'll be wedding vows. If you want to renew your wedding vows in the town of Cana of Galilee, uh, there will be Holy Communion in the Garden Tomb. And also there will be a sermon on the Sea of Galilee. Amen. And so if you want to go, amen, that that flyer will be sent to you. And um, uh, and I believe it will be an experience of a lifetime. Some folk have already been there, and they've, and they've expressed how wonderful and how glorious it is uh, to be, amen, uh, uh, to walk where Jesus walked and to stand where Jesus stood. Amen and amen. Also, my brothers and sisters, please don't forget to continue to pray for those who are on our sick and prayer list. Amen. So many people are suffering, and I, uh, um, is um, Sister Lucas, she's still in the hospital? All right, want to continue to pray for her. I wasn't able to get to her. Uh, this week, but we will definitely get to her. Amen. Uh, hopefully today. Amen. Want to continue to pray for everyone that's on our list. Amen. Thank God um, uh, that again, your name is still on the list. If your name not on the list, either one or two things. You got better or you went to that other land. Amen. Where you never grow old, but thank God you're still on the list. Amen. And we'll continue to pray. Uh, for you, you, and even you. And don't forget, my brothers and sisters, there are all the ways to give. You can text to give. Amen. You can text, amen, uh, 773-570-2088. Amen. If you text that number, amen, follow the instructions, and you, uh, uh, it'll be easy for you to give just like that. You can bring your tithe, amen, on Sunday morning, put it in the basket. You can also bring it during the week, put it in the deposit box. You know what that is. Amen. And you can also uh, go to our, you can um, go online to our website and also to our church app. We have a church app. Amen. Um, and uh, you can give that way too. But however you give, continue to give. And we thank you. Amen. For your giving. For you can't beat God's giving, right? No matter how you try. At this time, Deacon Hazard is going to come at this time.
Good morning, everyone. Just as a reminder, October was Clergy Appreciation Month. We had two key members of our clergy staff, to include the pastor, were not here last Sunday. So we counted it right to wait till they were present to make a presentation directly to them. So this morning, it is my honor to make presentations showing our appreciation for all the work that our clergy does. At this time, I would ask Pastor Sessoms if he would come and receive this token of appreciation. And the second token that I have is for uh, Reverend Bell. Reverend Bell. And one more time, uh, let's just show our appreciation for all that our clergy does for us, please. Thank you so very much. Um, thank you again, especially to the clergy of this church, to Reverend Johnson, Reverend, uh, Reverend Bell, amen, Reverend Fuller, uh, Minister uh, Sanchez. We thank God for all of them, amen. And uh, some of y'all laughed at that background music I was playing last week uh, during my little talk and my appreciation, amen. Uh, but nevertheless, we do appreciate uh, the gifts that God has given to this church. Amen. And we thank God for them. Amen. Uh, another thing, Brother Duke, Brother Duke and his wife on November the 4th. I mean, yeah, November the 4th. November? December. Oh, December. Okay, we got, okay, December ain't here yet. Okay, we, 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 we got you. We got you. Amen. 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 At this time, Reverend Johnson uh, wants to share uh, with us real quick. Come on, Reverend Johnson. Good morning, Little Union. I just want to share a quick story with you that might inspire some of you. In late October 2010, my brother was hospitalized, and I was off of military duty. And on November 2nd, uh, my dad called me and told me they were removing him from life support. So I made my way back to Cleveland and met my parents at the hospital, and I didn't make it in time. My brother had passed. So we did what we had to do at the hospital. We went back to my parents' house, gathered ourselves, got together with papers and whatnot, went to the uh, funeral home, made funeral arrangements, then made our way back home and kind of got settled in. But the difference is November 2nd, 2010, was election day. So after having done traveling back home, trying to help my parents keep it all together, making funeral arrangements for my brother. After all of that, being mentally drained and emotionally spent, I went to the ballot and cast my vote. I hope that tells you something about the importance of getting out to vote. Earlier this year, I went across the Edmund Pettus Bridge with a few friends where Bloody Sunday happened. People died that we might have the right to vote and they're still trying to take it away from us today. No matter what's going on, no matter what you have to do, please, on November 8th, if you have not already, cast your vote. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I couldn't put it any better myself. Amen. Uh, we have some guests here. Amen. And uh, one of my classmates from Virginia Union, amen, is here. Uh, brother, would you stand? And uh, your significant other, amen. Will you stand? Amen. And uh, give us your name. You can take your mask off. Give us your name and speak, and speak real loud. You used to be in the military, right? So I know you know how to inflect, amen.
Yes, sir. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So glad. It's always good to see a familiar face. Amen. And so we thank God uh, for you. And and, uh, and I know, you know, um, a couple of years ago, one of your best friends, one of our classmates, New Bill, passed away. And uh, it, 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 does some, it did something to all of us. Uh, but thank God that God can heal us where we hurt. And we give God praise. Amen for that. Amen as well. My brothers and sisters, if you will, get your Bibles out. Amen. And turn with me a, to, uh, to the book of Matthew chapter 18. Book of Matthew chapter 18. I want to read verses 15 through 17. Matthew 18, verses 15 through 17. And I'll be reading from uh, the New King James Version. Matthew 18. Fifteen through 17. And it reads like this. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him or her his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, Take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen or an unbeliever and a tax collector. Good God Almighty. Well, a tax collector was considered a traitor to the children of Israel. How are you going to be my brother or sister and you're going to rob me of my money? And give it to the Roman government. Amen. The word of the Lord for the people of God to the glory of God. Thanks be unto God. You may be seated. I want to preach this morning from the subject. Just the two of us. We can make it. If we try. Just the two of us. The men are going to say and give us a sermonic selection. We'll come back with the word of the Lord. Amen.
days are dark as night, he'll be there to make it all right. Cause I know, I know Jesus cares, cares for me. Jesus cares when I'm in sorrow. And my pain is so hard to bear. And he cares about my situation. It's so good to know he's always there. When my days are dark as night, he'll be there to make it all right. Yes, I know, I know Jesus cares, cares for me. Oh, yes, I know. I know he cares. That he cares. I know he cares. For me. Cares for me. Oh, yes, he does. Cares for me. I know, I know he cares. Jesus cares. I know he cares. I know he cares. Oh, yes, I know. I know he cares. That he cares. I know he cares for me. Cares for me. I thank you, Jesus. Cares for me. right on time cause I know I know he cares that he cares I know he cares I, I know I know he cares Jesus cares yes, yes I know I know he cares yes, that he cares I know he cares for me cares for me I thank you Jesus cares for me I, Can we give God praise? Can we give God praise knowing that he cares? I said he cares. He cares. He cares. He cares. He cares. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you didn't know he cared, you ought to be convinced by now that the Lord cares. 
I don't care what you're going through. He cares. If you got bills due, your money funny, your change is strange. He cares. Your spouse ain't acting right. He cares. Your significant other treating you like a dirty dog. The Lord cares. The pain you feel in your body. He cares. That son, that daughter who just won't act right. I'm telling you the Lord cares. That burden that you feel. He cares. That rejection that you felt. He cares. And somebody disrespected you and you and they know they disrespected you. Trust me, the Lord cares. He cares. I'm so glad. There are some folk that don't care. But I thank God that he cares. So draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou has died draw me near nearer nearer blessed Lord my 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 to thy precious to That precious to that precious bleed, bleeding side. Amen. Is that your prayer? Draw me nearer. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Yes, sir. Play, Michael. Play, Michael. My, my, my. My, my, my. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Amen. I felt the Holy Ghost right there. Amen. Can we thank God for the ministry gift for Brother Michael Gordon and his son, uh, uh, Tayshawn? Thank God for them. Amen. Faithful every Sunday. Amen. And I know Michael been having some health challenges himself, but he's been here. And we thank God for God preserving him, preserving his life. Amen. And amen. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. Just the other day, I was in a clergy gathering. And as part of the icebreaker, the presenter asked us a question. I'm going to pass it all along to you this morning. The person asked, said, in this season and stage of your life, What teaching of Jesus is most profound and impactful to who you are today? In the season and stage, what sayings of Jesus is causing you to stretch beyond where you are towards which you think God is calling you to be? 
given where you are in your walk with God and your maturation with the Lord, what teaching of our Lord and Savior resonates and resounds with the relevant reality of your life? What are the words that come out of your mouth that, that should I say come out of the mouth of Jesus that causes you, amen, to amen, to grow and draw closer in your walk with him? What teaching of Jesus impacts you the most right now? Somebody may answer uh, that the teaching of Jesus concerning uh, a forgiveness. Because you know it's a challenge to forgive folks 70 times 70. <laughs> For someone else, it may be your prayer life. As you realize that your prayer life is a little uh, inefficient and deficient. And you remember Jesus talking about, amen, that persistent widow, amen, who kept knocking on the unjust judge's door. To remind you that sometimes you have to pray, 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 and keep on praying until the Lord answers got to be persistent in prayer. Somebody else may be focused on uh, 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 learning to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Maybe, maybe God is calling you to get up out of your boat and walk by faith, but you find yourself sinking every now and then because you take your mind and your focus off of Jesus. Maybe that's your challenge. For someone else, maybe it's worry. Amen. Because Jesus really told us, he said, look, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, look, seek my agenda. Be concerned about my agenda. And then he says, guess what? I'll take care of all the rest that you need. But sometimes we worry anyway, don't we? Amen. What teaching of Jesus challenges you the most where you are right now? When it became my turn to speak, it was real simple for me. That the one teaching Jesus uh, uh, that resonated with me in this stage of my maturation, uh, there is one verse, the scripture that grabs my heart. Amen. One verse which causes me to stretch and grow into what God wants me to be. And that's right here in Matthew 18 and 15. Let me put it in context. I would argue with you that God is, watch this, is intimately concerned about how you and I relate to each other. God is concerned about how we treat one another. Amen. God's concern for your life is not simply about how much you shout on Sunday, and that's all right because I like to shout too. It's not about how many tongues you speak because I speak in tongues too. It doesn't even matter how many scripture you think you have memorized. Amen. God is not impressed with that. But God is concerned about how we treat one another. You come in church and folk speak to you and won't even look at you. you come to church and folk you speak to them and they got their head down hoping you won't speak to them. I would suggest to you that, watch this, watch this, that religion without relationship equals hypocrisy. Religion without a relationship with Jesus Christ and with humanity is no religion at all. You cannot claim to be, uh, be in a renewed relationship with God and not learn how to live and reconcile relationships with other people. Who you think you're fooling? God cares about relationships. Christianity is not some, 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 some personal pious of, of me, myself, and God existence. But Christianity is a calling on your life to be in, in uh, to be connected in a loving, fair, and just relationship with God, but also with God's people. Relationships matter to God. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 they matter so much. The Bible says you cannot.
cannot say you love God who you never seen with your eyes and not love the people you see every day. Just fooling yourself. How can you 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 how can you be so sanctified that and, and talk in tongues but 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 you can't say good morning in English to people who sit right next to you on your pew every Sunday. When the disciples asked Jesus, how would folk know uh, that we belong to you? Jesus said, they will know because you show love one for another. My brother, my sister, the word of God is so clear that when God shapes, uh, when he shapes Israel and brings them out of slavery, you know what he does? He gives them ten commandments and the first four are about their relationship with God. But the last six is about how you treat your brother and your sister. Amen, somebody. You cannot claim to be in relationship with God uh, uh, and, and, and not then know how to be in relationship with everybody else. Have y'all seen some folk in church? They, they act so deep and so spiritual. But they're just as mean as the devil. Always starting stuff. Ain't nothing right in their eyes. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Relationships are so important to God that in the first days of the church, amen, when they had communion, they could not come to the table if they had issue with one another. Amen. They were forbidden to have communion until they worked out the issue that they had in the pews. Because you could not come to the table unless you got the pew, the pew right first. I wonder how long communion would take on third Sunday. If you weren't allowed to take the bread and cup until you and your brother or sister work out your own issues. We might be here to five o'clock next uh, uh, third Sunday. If you look at Jesus, his biggest issue with the Pharisees was not that they claimed to be in relationship with God, but the problem was their relationship with God did not, amen, affect how they treated other people. They held people to a higher standard that they weren't even living themselves. That's why I got a problem with these folk talking about uh, 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 you're a murderer if you believe in a woman right to choose. And guess what? It's them same folk who've had abortions in secret. Hypocrisy. And God hates that. Amen, somebody. Same like one, one congressman, amen, uh, 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 wanted to write this bill, amen. Uh, anybody who's on drugs will not receive their welfare and food stamps. And come to find out he was hooked on cocaine himself. The ultimate hypocrisy. That's, what, that's why God had a problem with, with the church folk, with the Pharisees in that day. Because they, they were religious without relationship. Jesus looked at them and called them hypocrites. Because how can you say you love the word of God and that you love God himself and as a and and, and be as mean and mean spirited and and, and just being downright ugly to folk? Told you some folk are just some folk just nice nasty. They can smile in your face and still be nasty. As a matter of fact, if you if you take a step back and you look at the teaching of Jesus, the bulk of what Jesus teaches is not about how you get to heaven. Amen. The bulk of it has nothing to do with how you operate in the church. But the bulk of Jesus teaching is how you deal with people on the street. How to love and live with those. Amen. Who say they love the Lord. It's about relationship. Relationship matters to God. And because relationships are so important to Jesus, amen, he lays out some principles to help us deal with what he knows is inevitable in relationships. Jesus knows 
what you and I, uh, 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 what you and I uh, uh, are mature enough to understand. That in any relationship, watch this, offense is inevitable. You're going to offend somebody. At some point, at some time, at some time in your life, you are going to offend somebody. Amen. Might not be in your intention, but you're going to offend somebody. You cannot be in relationship with any other human being and at some moment not be offended. I don't care how well you know each other. I don't care how long you've been friends. I don't care. Amen. If your spouse, uh, you and y'all been married 55 years. I don't care if your child, your co-worker, your supervisor, your cousin, your frat, your, your sorrow, or, or, or your fellow soprano, alto, tenor, or bass. I came by to tell you that at some moment, at every relationship, somebody's going to put a bad taste in your mouth. At some moment, they're going to say something that you think, amen, they should, uh, uh, they, uh, they should not have said. At some moment, they're going to do something uh, uh, you think they should not have done. At some moment, someone is going to mistreat, to mistreat you disrespectfully. And, uh, uh, I don't care how much you love your boo or your baby. At some moment, amen, every human being is going to deal with offense. As a matter of fact, y'all just tell yourself, offense is inevitable. It's inevitable. And since offense is inevitable, the presence of offense is not what destroys relationships, but it's how you handle it that destroys relationships. You can't avoid avoid being offended, but uh, uh, it's how you handle it. It will determine whether your relationship remains or not. Amen. And realizing that offense is inevitable, Jesus lays out uh, one verse of scripture that 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 that's meant to help resolve uh, just about everything. Jesus knows you're going to be offended, amen, knows you're going to be mistreated, and so he speaks to us uh, in this 18th chapter in one verse that is meant to help resolve half of the mess that we go through. One verse will diffuse, amen, that passive aggressiveness with your co-worker. One verse will help deal with that issue in the soprano section in the choir. One verse we we'll rectify church and make church a better place. One verse will make your family reunion less awkward. One verse will help resolve the pettiness that destroys friendships. One verse, if you put it into practice, it will change everything. And it goes a little something like this. If anybody does you wrong, Go to them directly. Tell them how you felt. Just between the two of you. I call this the 1815 principle. Hashtag 1815 if you will. Here it is. If somebody leaves a bad taste in your mouth and they will. If somebody offends you and they will. If somebody mistreats you and they may. Don't just sit on it. Don't just let the fire, amen, build up, amen. But go to that person directly and tell them how they made you feel. Now, you can take it or leave it. But it's written in red. Y'all know those, those words that are written in red. Who's talking? Jesus is talking. These words are written in red. So I suggest you pay attention to him. This is how Jesus says we ought to handle things. And notice, uh, uh, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, sometimes it's the last way we choose to handle offense. Jesus told us how to handle it. But guess what? We choose to do it some other way. Amen. We choose the easier road. It's easy to just cut somebody off. I'm done with them. You're dead to me. That's what they say now. 
It's easy to just avoid people. Oh, I see Sister Jackie Banks on aisle five. Let me go on aisle seven. It's easy to avoid people. It's easy to find the quickest route so you don't have to cross that person's path. And then we get super spiritual by pronouncing a benediction over some folk. Dirt to dirt, as to ashes, dust to dust, because you dead to me. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent. One from another. We don't practice the 1815 principle. We rather find some other folk and tell them what they did because it's easier to talk to other folk, amen, than it is to talk to the person who supposedly offended you. We rather go out on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and post all our feelings and emotions because we have more courage, watch this, to type stuff than to talk about stuff. A lot of us get bold when we're in meetings. Yeah, 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 I've dealt with that. Some folk get bold when they're in meetings, but when you're one-on-one, they act like a chicken. I noticed that some folk get real bold in some of these meetings. Amen. I know. But they act cowardly one-on-one. We want to act like we're super spiritual sometimes. And act like nothing bothers us because uh, we want to act like we're so saved and sanctified and that our skin is so thick that nothing gets underneath our skin. It just rolls off of us. Well, who do you think you're kidding? But you know you are hurting from the inside out. We would let it fester in our spirit and disturb our joy and ruin our peace so that every time you see that person that offended you, you feel some kind of way and it's sitting right there underneath your skin. And so the next person who dares look at you wrong, amen, you take it out on them. That's why some folk don't need to be dating as soon as they get out of a, a relationship. Some folks, as soon as they get divorced or as soon as they quit dating somebody for, for, for 25 years, they go right into another relationship and you haven't even dealt with the issues. So you take that same old baggage and bring it to the next relationship. It's not going to work. We let it fester. Amen. And so now we're damaging relationships with people who had nothing to do with what happened to you. And Jesus is saying, when, 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 when someone has done you wrong, I need you to go to that person directly, just the two of you, and share with them how you felt. 1815, amen, it's, 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 it's hard to put into practice. And I kept wondering, why do we tell other folk? Why do we post stuff on social media? Why do we let it fester? Why don't we just do what Jesus told us to do? Part of the answer is, watch this, that some people are addicted to victimization. Some people love playing the victim. Some people love putting themselves in a permanent pathetic place so that they can always be the victim and therefore have an excuse to respond in a way that, uh, uh, that they want because, uh, guess what, they are the victim. And you, you can, and guess what, and, and guess what, so they feel uh, their, 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 their mess can be excused. I'm the victim, so I can treat you any kind of way. I'm the victim. I can talk to you the way I want to talk to you. You excuse yourself from being obedient. You excuse yourself from being godly. Amen. Because uh, uh, you say, well, uh, uh, they did me wrong, and so now I can do whatever I want to do to them. I have found that people who are addicted to being the victim, They hate being, watch this, called out. Yeah, they do. 
They hate being called out. They want to pass on bad behavior and, de- and, and, and don't like it when you, when you, when you tell them that uh, whatever he or she did to you does not justify how you are choosing to respond. Amen. Uh, because your victimization does not give you an excuse to act ungodly. I know some of you all have not, uh, uh, are not going to like this, so let me give you uh, uh, some scripture. Amen. The Bible says in John 5, Jesus told, uh, 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 comes to the pool of Bethesda, and there's a brother, amen, who's been uh, laying there uh, 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 sick for 38 years, amen. And Jesus comes to him and asks him a question. He says, uh, do you want to be made well? The man gets an attitude with Jesus. And says, how are you going to ask me that uh, 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 do I want to get well? I've been here 38 years and, and you want to know if I want to be made well? You see, Jesus understood that everybody who is down don't really want to get up. And I need to know, amen, Jesus said, I need to know, do you want to stand on your own two feet? Amen. Do you want to be more than uh, uh, a victim, but do you want to be a victor? Do you want more for yourself? Some people love laying down. They're addicted to playing the victim. Some people don't practice this 1815 principle because they love to be the victim. Some people don't practice the 1815 principle because they are afraid, watch this, of confrontation. They say, I don't like to argue. It's just not worth it. It's going to lead into a fight, and if it goes left, then I'm going to go right, and it's going to be bad. I suggest to you that what Jesus prescribes here is not confrontation. Someone needs to know that avoidance, watch this, avoidance never leads to deliverance. I said avoidance never leads to you being set free. Avoiding how you feel never makes it better. Avoiding the conversation never makes it go away. Avoidance never leads to deliverance. Maybe you like playing the victim. Maybe you don't like confrontation. And and maybe uh, uh, for most of us, uh, it is the fear of the consequences of the conversation. Because if you, if I allow myself to be vulnerable and share with you how you hurt me, uh, 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 you may find out that uh, uh, you care, amen. Matter of fact, I may find out, what that I care more about you than you care about me. The consequence of this 1815 principle, when you decide to share with someone what they did that hurt you, there's only one or two directions it can go. Either you're going to gain a brother or a sister, or you're going to lose a brother or a sister. When the offense comes and you mature up and you decide to put it out there, either the relationship is going to be reconciled or someone, amen, uh, 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 is going to just be let go. Yet Jesus tells us to practice this because Jesus understood that some people, watch this, will bless you when they're in your presence. And then other folk will be a blessing to you if they're absent from your presence. Somebody may get that when they get home. You ain't hurting me because you don't hang with me. Matter of fact, it's a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you are not called to be in relationship, watch this, with everybody anyway. Sometimes God would allow the offense to open your eyes and help you realize who you are called and who you are not called to be in relationship with. Amen. See, all all offenses is, 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 is not from the devil. Listen, give you, give you a perfect example. Paul and Barnabas, they were doing their thing in ministry. But then they had a disagreement, didn't they? They had a disagreement. 
and, 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 and uh, Barnabas wanted to take John Mark with him to the next journey. And Paul said, oh, no. He deserted us the last time, and God can't use no coward soldier. But, 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 but Barnabas was adamant. And so guess what? Paul and Barnabas split up. But here's the good news. The good news is in that split, the word went further and it increased. So I'm saying to you that guess what? All confrontation ain't bad. It may be God's will that it happened. Am I right about it? I give you another example. When when the church when the when the when, when the church started early in the beginning, and guess what? Folk were comfortable staying in Jerusalem. But the Lord allowed Amen persecution to come to the church. And guess what? They ain't meet at the church house every Sunday no more. They were scattered. And as they were scattered, they were sharing the word. See how God does? So watch what Jesus says, because I'm almost done. Jesus says, go to them and tell them how you made me feel. Go to them and share your feelings. Listen, it's not confrontation. This isn't cussing somebody out. It isn't getting uh, uh, somebody told. It isn't condemning someone. Uh, 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 this is uh, uh, maturing enough to say, this is what you did, and this is how you made me feel. Please understand that feelings are just that, feelings. They are not indictments. They are not guilty verdicts. Feelings don't condemn you to hell. Me telling you how you made me feel does not mean uh, you don't know the Lord. But Jesus says you've got to share how you feel because it's not healthy for you to suffocate in your own pain. Hallelujah. It's not wise for you to carry your own burden uh, of a hurt in your life that you could, you could have alleviated if you just spoke about it. And I know somebody's not going to like this. It's all good. But at this stage in my life, I'm too grown <laughs> for me not to tell you how you make me feel. You may not like it. Because I done told y'all. I ain't playing church no more. And some of us. We still playing church. We still playing church. You don't want to be the church. You want to play church. But I don't have time. Because the charge to keep I have. A God I got to glorify. You may not want to hear it. But what I have decided is that I'm going, amen, uh, uh, I'm going, I'm not going to lose sleep withholding something within me when I know God is telling me to deal with it. I'm not too grown not to be able, amen, to express myself and let you know that you offended me. Is there anybody in here and out there, amen, that's grown enough uh, 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 and you can declare that uh, I'm just going to have to tell it like a T.I. is. Because I got to let you know how I feel and where I'm coming from. I don't want, when I leave you, I don't want you to have no doubt how I feel. And when you put it out there, it's going to go in one or two directions. There's only two options. When you tell someone how they made you feel, it could wind up with someone who doesn't care about how you feel. It's highly possible that they don't care that they hurt your feelings. It's highly possible that they could care less whether they hurt you or not. And you know what? You ought to praise God if that's the case. I know it's going to hurt you. I know it hurts you. Amen. But you ought to praise God. Because now you see them for who they are. And my Angelo says that folk tell you. If they show you how you are. Ain't no need for you keep guessing. 
Believe what you see. Believe what you hear. Am I right? Hallelujah. Praise God. Because God just revealed to you the person that you need to distance yourself from. Because I cannot be in a relationship with someone who continues to hurt me and does not care. Are you masochistic? Do you love pain so much that you will continue to allow folk to abuse you? Nobody's that crazy. Not at Little Union anyway. Someone who is mean and does not want to apologize. If, if, if you don't care about how I feel, I cannot subject myself to that type of abuse anymore. This is how you know to say bye-bye to someone when you told them that they offended you. If they say If they say this, I'm sorry you feel that way. Bye-bye. I'm sorry you feel that way. Does not acknowledge that you care. I'm sorry how I made you feel. Now, that validates how I feel. Am I right? Listen to the first thing that comes out of people's mouths. Amen, because uh, if they say, I'm sorry that you feel that way, then guess what? Close the book on them and say goodbye. Because it's possible that, 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 that you will encounter someone who does not care. If you keep reading Matthew 18, Jesus uh, says, listen, uh, uh, if people treat you like they don't care, He says, then treat them like an unbeliever or a tax collector. And we all have uh, some some funny feeling about the IRS, don't we? Now, 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 thank God for if you work for the IRS, may God bless you. And I hope you get promoted. Amen. But oh, when you get something in the mail, they got IRS, Internal Revenue Service, you know you owe. I've been there. Amen. If you keep reading in Matthew 18, Jesus says, listen, if people treat you, amen, like they don't care, he says, then treat them like an unbeliever or a tax collector. Again, a tax collector in that day was a Jew. Amen. Was a Jew uh, uh, who would who would who would get taxes from his own brothers and sisters, but not only get the taxes. But guess what? Guess what? He would charge excess. And he would take some for himself, put in his pocket, and give the rest to the Roman government who suppressed and oppressed them. That person was considered a traitor. The worst sinners of all. Amen. The worst sinners of all. You can find that in most cases. It's not that they don't care. It's because they don't know. Sometimes. Some people don't know they offended you. I would argue with you that the majority of people who have offended you don't even know they did it. I didn't know what uh, 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 I didn't know what I said from the pulpit offended you. I didn't know. But you ain't come to church no more. And I asked the question, why don't you come to church? You said something in the pulpit I didn't like. Well, I didn't know. And I can't know unless you tell me. Amen, somebody. But you get in your group and you say it, but you couldn't come to me one-on-one. It's tight, but it's right. I didn't know that simply following up on a request offended you. I didn't know that uh, because uh, 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 I didn't ask your permission, it offended you. 
I'm trying to do ministry and you mean to tell me I got to keep taking frivolous votes? I told you I ain't playing church. We're doing the Lord's work here. I didn't know that my actions left a bad taste in your mouth because you didn't tell me. And listen, I know I'm a prophet and priest, but guess what? A prophet don't know nothing unless God tell him. And God ain't going to tell the prophet everything. God going to use you to tell me some stuff. Amen, somebody. Uh, be, be careful about these folk that always got a word for you. What they'll try to do is manipulate you. That's what they'll do. And if you don't come to me and share with me that I offended you, guess what you do? You rob me of the opportunity of knowing what my offense was. I was just being me. I didn't mean any harm. But you prevent me the opportunity to grow when you don't come to me and say I offended you. It's amazing to me how folk will share their offense with the group but will not share it with the person who supposedly offended them on a one-on-one basis. So I have a question. When a person is offended, Why does Jesus put the responsibility on the person who was offended? Because God uses the offended uh, party to approach the offender so that, guess what? Uh, We can know or we can look at you and see what a man and see that there is an opportunity to grow. When you come to me and share with me how I offended you, amen, uh, it helps me see how my words and my actions hurt someone. And it gives me an opportunity to grow and God uses you to make me better. If you don't share with me, you rob me of the opportunity to grow. And if you don't come to me, you, uh, 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 you, you, uh, uh, if you don't come to me, amen, you rob me. And you cause me not to grow. Because it's quite possible that you misunderstood what I said. It's quite possible that you misheard, isn't it? It's quite possible that uh, uh, you are too sensitive, isn't it? It's quite possible that when you look for stuff uh, uh, to be offended by, you'll find it. I told you I love court shows. And I love divorce court. I love watching divorce court. Amen. And, uh, and, and a lot of times, every time you turn around, uh, Your Honor, I looked into his or her cell phone. And the judge would tell him, if you, if, you, if you look for something, you will find it. So if you come to church looking for wrong stuff, you're going to find it. People, there's some folk, there's some folk that actually come to church flipping the Bible, flipping the Bible. They ain't looking to read, they're looking to see if you made a mistake. You come to church for the wrong reason. God has never anointed anybody, amen, to keep the preacher in check. Because if you take six months to mind your own business, they're gonna take you another six months to leave other folk business alone. <laughs> Am I right about it? It's tight, but it's right. And, and, and this is the pastoral sermon. I didn't want to preach it, but God impressed upon me to preach it today. Told the folk in, Sunday, in, in, in Bible study on a noonday that, that I had a tough message and I didn't want to preach it. But God would not, God arrested my spirit and would not let me get away from it. My brothers and sisters, this is the Lord's church. And this is serious business. Church work can be dirty and nasty at times. Let me say it again. Church work can be dirty and nasty at times. But you got to deal with it. That's why people don't like to attend church business meetings. That's why folk don't attend church business meetings. Because uh, they don't want to deal with the dirty and the nasty. All they want to do is, is deal with the hallelujahs and the shouts. But you can't get to the hallelujah and the shout if you don't deal with the dirty stuff first. 
How you going to shout over mess? Lord, have mercy. It's quite possible that your real issue is not me. (laughs) It's quite possible that your real issue is the relationship you had with your daddy or your mama. Or something that, 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 or some trauma, amen, you experienced growing up. And since you never gotten over it, you are venting it on other people to cover up. Opportunities for you to grow as well. But if we interchange and exchange with each other, we have the opportunity to make each other better. When I'm sharing with you, I'm growing. And when you share with me, amen, uh, 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 you are to grow as well. And we are establishing what is necessary in a relationship that God has called you to. When we exchange with each other, we both can give, amen, each other the benefit of the doubt. In a relationship that God has called you to, uh, 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 amen, to maintain requires that I give you the benefit of the doubt. We always got to think the worst of folk. If I talk to you and you talk to me, that means, amen, we can, uh, 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 we get to know each other. So uh, uh, I'm not going to allow Satan, amen, to put something in my ear to cause me to think I don't know you. When I hear it, amen, I know you didn't mean mean it that way because I know I know you and I've had conversation with you before. Give you the benefit of the doubt. I know your intention because I have built a relationship with you. And therefore, I'm comfortable with coming to you and letting you know how I feel. But I got to quit. We got to quit allowing Satan to build a wedge between us. We got to quit that. And, and And then you got to, you must understand and recognize the schemes of Satan himself. Because he had a little religion in it. If you have a problem with me, amen. Come to me. Because I don't have ESP. I can't read your mind. Call me. Let's have a conversation. And I'm just not just talking about me, but I'm talking about all of us. Amen. Amen. So who the Lord, who is the Lord calling you to talk to? Who is it in your life that when you see them, something just rises up in you, anger rises up in you, uh, uh, and you don't want to deal with them? Matter of fact, when you see them, it causes your blood pressure to go up. Who is it you need to have a conversation to with? You are harboring some offense and hurt. And the Lord is saying, I need for you, amen, to talk to the person that hurt you. Quit talking to the other folk. But go straight to that person. And guess what? Sometimes fear will come upon you. Fear will come upon you when you're trying to deal with some issues. Amen. When it's time for you to have that conversation, fear will come upon you. Because if you keep on reading in these verses, uh, you're going to hear a verse that sounds real familiar to you. Jesus says, if you go down to verse 20, you'll find where Jesus says, wherever two or three are gathered. Now, whenever you hear that quote, most of us use that quote, guess what, when we have a service or something and there's low attendance. And the first thing we say, well, you know, the Bible says wherever two or three are gathered, he's in the midst. And that is true. But that's the only time we use it, doing low attendance. Amen. But can I help you today? Whenever you hear that quote, most people think about low church attendance, right? Amen. I hope uh, uh, I just didn't uh, bust somebody's bubble, but, but, but that verse has nothing really to do with low church attendance. That passage is at the end 
of what Jesus says. He says, when you go to a brother or sister, whenever two of you are gathered, God is already in the midst. So when fear comes upon you and you on your way to have a conversation with the person who offended you, Jesus is saying, don't you worry because I will be there too. We got to get away from, you know, uh, we in the same ministry together and, and, and I'm not going to offend because I don't want to offend my friend. But this is kingdom work. This is God's business. And you got to tell the truth. And sometimes when you tell the truth, somebody's feelings going to get hurt. Amen. And so when it's time for you to address an offense with someone, don't allow fear to overtake you. Uh, 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 but, 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 but no, Jesus is saying, if you go to your brother or sister, just know I am there with you. Because sometimes when it's time for you to have that conversation with someone, you will find that God has already prepped the other person. So the conversation won't even go left like you thought it would. Sometimes that person, God will deal with that person if they are receptive. God will deal with that person. And when you tell, told that person how you feel and they'll say, darling, I'm so sorry. Yes, I did say that. Yes, I said it in a, in a moment of rage. Amen. Then you say that, brother, sister. Because sometimes when it's time for you to have that conversation with someone, you will find that God has already prepped that other person. And instead of a conversation going to the left, amen, the conversation turns out all right and healing begins between the two of us. And now you have a reconciled relationship. The devil is defeated. Your family is strengthened. Your relationship is restored. The church is made stronger because wherever two have gathered to talk, God is in the midst. Who is the Lord calling you to talk to? Because if a brother or sister does you wrong, go to them directly. Share the offense between the two of you. And watch how God will be in the midst of us. Can we give God praise? Amen. Amen. This sermon is about deliverance and healing one with another. No need to look at somebody else. Look at yourself. Examine yourself. Who do I need to have a conversation with? Then you may be on the other end. It may be you that did the offending. You don't have to wait until that person come to you. Won't you go to them? Let us pray. Father, thank you today for your word. Your word can produce healing between me, my brother, and my sister. Thank you, Lord, that you are in the midst when these conversations need to be had. And so, God, maybe someone here today, God, you're impressing upon them because they are being suffocated. They are bound. They don't have any joy because of what has happened to them. Let them release it now and let them go to that person and let them know the pain that they have caused. Bless us now, we pray. In Jesus' name. There may be one today. Amen. You, you know you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. You know that if Jesus would come today, your soul would be lost to eternal damnation. Let me tell you something. Hell is just as real as the nose <laughs> is on my face. And hell is prepared for a place for an unprepared people. But heaven is prepared for a place for a prepared people. Is there one today who will give their life to Jesus Christ? Reverend, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. 
I want to I want to renounce my sin. I want God to turn me around and help me live a life of righteousness. Is there one today? Maybe you know the Lord, but you you backslid, you messed up. But you want to get back in right relationship with him. Is there one today? God says I'm married to the backslider. Then the third call is for those who are saved. But you don't have a church home and you want to cast your lot right here at the Little Union Church. Won't you come forward today? Will there be one who will also give these deacons your hand, but most of all give God your heart? Is there one? Is there one? In our virtual space, if you heard us, won't you contact us? If you made a decision to give your life to Jesus Christ, let us know. The address is right there on the screen. Our number's there on the screen. The email address on the screen. Let us know that you have made that decision. We will contact you and give you further instru- instructions on how to grow in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name. Thank you, Deacons. You may be seated. Of Jesus, yes, there's peace in the name of Jesus, peace in the name of Jesus, no other name I know, yeah, oh, bless that wonderful name, bless that wonderful name. Tomorrow is 7 at 7 prayer call. I want to thank God for Reverend Bell, who was leading the prayer call all month of October. Thank you so much. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. We're looking forward. Amen. To 7 at 7. Don't forget, tomorrow is first Monday. We'll be praying and fasting from 5 in the morning to 5 in the evening. Amen. And then at 7 o'clock through Zoom, we're going to come together and pray together. Let me tell you something. If you... If you are spiritual like you say you are, you don't have a you don't have a problem with praying together. Some people some people talk a good game, but the evidence shows something different. Take time out to pray because guess what? And, and and some of you you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Some of you will show up for the business meeting on Zoom, but won't show up for prayer on Zoom. Your priorities is all messed up. I don't understand that. That you show up on the business meeting but won't show up for prayer meeting. Help us, Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen, we pray something was said and done to bless you today. I know it won't no shouting message, but we don't need to be shouting all the time. We need to deal with some real issues. And we need to stop shouting over mess, too. Amen? Somebody? Amen, somebody. Listen, uh, uh, G, the Bible tells us to live peaceably with all men, if it be possible, and holiness without no man shall see the Lord. Listen, there are some times where you're going to have to get away from some, po- some folk in order to live, to live peaceably with them. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and listen, I'm, I'm finding out even during this, this time of COVID and all that, that life is too short for me not to enjoy myself because I don't know how many more days I got left. Amen. Amen. There was a time that, that, that those folk that was in their 80s and 90s would die before somebody my age that's 54. But that ain't the case no more, is it? Amen. I was in Richmond yesterday, and, 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 and down in Richmond, there was this uh, carriage with horses with a little baby's um, casket. Some mother, some father had no idea that they would have to bury their little daughter. 
these are the times in which we're living in. And so we don't have time to be messing around. We, we, we've, got to, we've got to get the word out that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Don't forget on Tuesday to get out and vote, my brothers and sisters. Vote as, listen, every vote from this, from this time forward is essential. Amen. Is essential. Because let me tell you something. Your way of life will change if it gets in the wrong folk hands. Amen. And I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but I can tell you who not to vote for. Amen. Don't vote for them folk, amen, who believe a lie. Don't amen. vote for those folk who think that the, that the, uh, that the, that the election was rigged. Amen. Don't vote for those folk who said that those folk who raided the Capitol were just good people. Amen. You don't like it? That's your problem. But it's the truth. Amen. I'm not telling you who to vote for. But if you are a woman or a man of God, I'm suggesting who you should not vote for without even calling names. Amen. Bless your heart. May God bless you. May God keep you. May we stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory majesty dominion and power both now and forever and we all sing Amen.